Hello, this is a review of the Intel 510 series 120GB solid state hard drive that's a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connection. Now I'm very happy with the drive. I think this thing is blazing fast, my computer boots really fast with a few caveats that aren't the drive's fault that I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, and overall it's just a dream for me. Uh, by being solid state, you don't have any moving parts, so the lifespan of this drive should be larger than your usual uh, platter-based uh, hard disk drives that have moving parts and will eventually fail. Now, not to say this won't ever fail, it definitely can, uh, but it should last longer than something without moving parts. Also, without anything without any moving parts, it should have a lower heat profile so that it really shouldn't be giving off much in terms of heat, whereas other hard drives had traditionally given off heat as well. <clears throat> so even though I've mounted it in front of my fan so that it could possibly stay cool, uh, I don't think I was too worried about having heat anyways. Um, my particular case, I had a two and a half inch drive bay that was down here. So if you see the, the raised platform right there, um, I had pulled it out from there and put it down over here just to mount it a little bit more in front of the fan. Uh, but again, I don't think you really have to worry about that. So you can see the two and a half inch profile is definitely smaller than the three and a half inch uh, hard disk drives. So what I do, because this is only 120 gigabytes, which is plenty to work with to install Windows 7 and all of your documents and applications. So install all of those applications for fast access up here. And then I use a two terabyte SATA 3 six gigabit per second hard drive uh, like this one here from Seagate, a Barracuda that I put all my video files and music files and all of the larger content over there. Because um, if you think about it, when I need to open a video, everything is uh, in the same line. So when you start reading a video, that's probably stored sequentially. Whereas on a, when you're opening documents and applications, you have files all over the place. And that's what a solid state hard drive can do better than a spinning platter-based hard disk drive is with the solid state, it can read files from anywhere in the drive at no different speed than the other ones. Whereas the spinning platter-based hard drives, uh, they have to move heads around to find data. So it only gets lucky if it can pull things off in a strip. where And then it has to move the head to go seek somewhere else on this. Whereas this, it can just pull from 50 different locations in sequence without having any speed difference to move anything because it's just solid state. So uh, this is why you want to use this as your boot device where Windows is installed and Firefox and Internet Explorer and Microsoft Word and put all of your Word documents here so it's easy to open them super, super fast. Um, so that makes a good primary. And then put all of your larger files and things that you use less frequently on down here. So again, put your primary applications on your solid state hard drive and put your large files on the, your larger terabyte based drive. Um, if you're a developer, by the way, a lot of times you have many, many little um, Java files and different files that are compiled into dot .class files, and um, yeah, solid state drives do a really good job for making things like that faster. So now this is a SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, so basically make sure that you connect it to an appropriate connection on your motherboard. So this is here is marked SATA 6G for 6 gigabit per second, which means SATA 3. Um, as opposed to the SATA 2, 3 gigabit per second that are on my motherboard. So to make full advantage of this drive, you will want to make sure that your device supports SATA 6. Uh, however, if you don't, um, then you can still connect it. It just will run at the slower speed of whatever is available. So if you only have SATA 2, 3 gigabit, it should still work. However, the 510 series is what offers SATA 3, 6 gigabit. Uh, the uh, predecessor series to this uh, did uh, SATA 2, 3 gigabit, and so if you're paying for the difference, you might want to make sure that you have a 6 gigabit per second connection on your board. Otherwise, you're just looking from down the road for the future. So now let's get a look at the back side of the device where the connectors are. So this is the drive here, and we can see the SATA data cable is the one in the middle on the right, and the SATA power cable is the middle on the left, behind the blue SATA cable that's hanging in front of it. Um, these are the connections on the back of it. Now the retail version of this drive does come with a, the black SATA cable that you see connected here. So I'd recommend just using that, that SATA cable. And 
Uh, it comes with a mounting kit if you need to mount it in a three and a half inch bay because if you do not have a two and a half inch bay like I have here it does come with the rails to mount it into a three and a half inch bay such as if I wanted to mount it right above the hard disk drive below it. It comes with the kit to help you adapt it for that. Now in terms of boot time um, I was able to get Windows 7 to boot in about three seconds at first. When I did a clean install of Windows 7, three seconds I was at the logon screen uh, for Windows 7 with this solid state drive. And I think that's because with operating systems, your files are randomly located all over the drive. And a solid state drive is exceptionally good at reading files from any location of the drive with no difference in speed. Whereas a platter-based spinning drive needs to move heads to find things at different locations that aren't stored sequentially in the hard drive. So, uh, but without anything on Windows, it took three seconds. Now the thing is, is most internet security suites on average will slow your computer down by 20 to 40 seconds. And there are websites dedicated to evaluating all the different security suites out there and telling you the boot time slowdown, the runtime slowdown, and the shutdown slowdown. So when I took my three second boot time with Trend Micro Internet Security added, it slowed down to 13 seconds. So before, I couldn't even, it didn't even get time to finish drawing the Windows logo before it used to come up. And then once you install internet security, it takes 13 seconds on my particular system. So just be aware that all internet security suites will slow down your boot time. Um, and so that will change you from probably having a nearly instantaneous boot from the time you hit the power button and sit down at your computer. In terms of software, Windows 7 already natively understands solid state drives enough so that it knows not to defrag them and the Windows 7 install had no problem recognizing the drive and formatting it as needed to install a new copy of Windows. Um, now you do not want to defrag a solid state drive because you only get so many reads and writes for the drive and then you therefore limit the lifespan of the drive by letting it try to move things around on the drive for no other reason. Because it can already read things from wherever they are on the drive at no speed penalty. Whereas defragging was used on a platter based spinning hard drive that needed things moved for things that are going to be accessed together into sequential blocks so that it doesn't have to move the head to access the things that are most likely to be accessed together. Because <clears throat> that's what defragmenting did is it moved all the blocks that are likely to be read together into a sequence so that it doesn't have to move the head. So that problem doesn't plague the solid state drives which is how they're significantly better in random read performance. And there's also a software toolkit, some drivers and utilities that Intel has that comes with the drive, uh, but you'll want to go to the Intel website to make sure that you have the latest version of them. So the drive toolkit will both check the latest version of the firmware as of the release of the software toolkit. So it won't actually check for future versions of the, of the firmware that the current version of the software doesn't know about, uh, but it's nice that it has the firmware check built into it. Um, and then the toolkit has this optimization button. So they want you to click the optimization button once a week or you can set it up as a scheduled task that it automatically runs. Uh, or you can just click it yourself. You can run it as many times as you want. Um, there's apparently no drawback to running it more than uh, once a week, but uh, Intel wants you to run it at least once a week either by schedule or manually. So whatever magic it does, it optimizes the drive somehow. So just to be aware that you're going to want that um, as well. But otherwise, the drive is mostly set it and forget it. You know, you set up that schedule to run, and then after that, um, it should be good to go, and you don't have to think about it, and it's just really fast.